In this video, I will be telling you guys how you can make your mixing sound better using volume and panning. Hey guys, what's up, Forever Bouncer, and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'll be telling you guys how you can make your mixing sound better using panning and volume. This is my second part of my three part mixing tutorial and I build upon a knowledge that I already gave in my first video, which is called Cutting Unwanted Frequencies. If you haven't checked it out, I already highly suggest you do. Another thing I want to point out is that I'm using Fruity Loops 12 in this video. However, all the things that I'll be telling you guys can be used within other DAWs. If you're interested in Fruity Loops 12 or you want to know more, just go into the description. I will put a link there so you guys can check that out. Now, that being said, let's just start the video, right? So I've created a really quick and simple loop for you guys. I only use some drum samples because that's a lot easier. And I've just put up over here, as you can see, a little drum loop. So I'm just going to play the sounds one by one for you guys and just explain a little bit by them and what I will do. So first of all, we have the kick. So let me just play the kick for you. As you can hear, it's a, it's a quite simple and, you know, easy sounding kick. I really like that because it instantly has a, you know, a great bass to start off with. Another thing I have here is multiple claps. I have just three uh, clap for, and that works this out of three clap layers. So this is the first layer for the, the clap. As you can hear, I just cut it away some of the frequencies on the lower end. I also added a bit of reverb to make it like sound a bit bigger. Here's the second clap that we have. It's a little bit more snappier, so it will give more of the snap in, in the clap. And then we have clap number three. Which kind of has a little bit of both. It has a bit more or to the low and also has a bit high. And of course we have the hi-hat. Just a really simple hi-hat. Now that we have seen all the drum samples, I'm just going into the mixer channel, which is over here, and I already assigned everything to it. I already used some EQ and stuff to make it sound better, to cut away some of the unwanted frequencies that we don't like. And this is how the loop sounds without me You're basically touching anything else besides just cutting away some of the frequencies. The clap in this case is too loud, and the kick is, you know, kind of buried under the sounds. So how are we going to solve that? Well, we can, you know, do two things. We can say we're just going to boost the kick and I'm just going into my mixer channel and I'm just going to boost this button all the way up. And then it probably will sound like the kick is more pumping and better. However, the issue that we're going to run into at one point is that this sound over here is going to be too loud. It's going to be over zero decibels and then it's going to sound distorted. And there's only so much that you can go up to. And I really don't like to boost my sounds. I'd rather just downgrade my sounds by using the volume to make them sound softer. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, I really like to start off with just a kick, so I'm quickly gonna mute all the sounds here and just play the kick so I can hear how loud the kick is. And then I will just start to add the sounds one by one to make sure that they're in the right spot for me that I like. And this is really personal a thing that you have to do, of course. I will make your sound maybe look easier for you guys if you're kind of new, but just practice this a lot and a lot and you will get a lot better eventually into making this. And I'm still practicing this a lot and a lot as well. And I notice that every time I'm doing this again, it's making my mixing sound better. Now, another thing that I want to show out just before I start to, you know, mix it together is that the reason why I started with the kick is that I want to have the kick in the middle, like it's the main thing. This is basically what drives the mixing, this is what drives the track, it's the kick. That's what makes it pumping, that's what makes it keeping going, that's what makes it sound cool. So I'm just always starting with the kick like this and I'm just gonna add the first clap. I'm just gonna drag the first clap down to probably around here because it's really big and I don't really want this one to be the, the main part of the clap. I want to be the snappy part a bit more main. I already figured that out. So I'm just going to drag this one and add it too as well. Now one thing I forgot to mention as well is that I'm going to use the separation of stereo. So it will sound bigger, you know, the, the stereo will be more separated. And I'm just going to do that actually for all of these sounds down here. That's this button over here. And I'm sure in any DAW there's probably there's a button somewhere hidden as well to do that. Or there might be a plugin that you can use to do this. There's many, you know, many ways to do this, but I just, I'm just going to do it this way. So it will sound a bit bigger already. I'm just going to put it around like this to make sure that it's not too loud. 
as you can see this i'm really trying to hear right now like what's the clap doing what's going on how's the mixing i think this sounds pretty right so i'm just gonna add the next one just gonna pull it down as well i guess to around here maybe I think that would just do fine, so let's just add a hi-hat. I'm just gonna pull it down to here, let's see. I already know that it's gonna need to be pulled down a lot because it's pretty loud, so. I think this would be a trick, maybe this one needs a bit less. Because this one of course has the reverb, so I, we, we don't want to have it too big of a reverb. We're gonna add a lot of other sounds you know, that's what we're thinking about. We're gonna add a lot of other sounds in later on, so we don't want it to be too big and taking up too much space. And I think this is really shows like great way of how this is kinda going right now. Now another thing that I explained in my previous tutorial is that for instance in the, the bass part you have the kick and the bass and they're kind of fighting for the place there. Especially if you have other instruments also having bass sounds. So we cut them away using EQ. But in this case, we are having a little bit of an issue because if we cut away some of the higher sounds from, for instance, the clap or the hi-hat, they will not sound so great. They will take away the brightness and they're, you know, meant to sound great there and high there. So what we can do, however, is we can use the panning. Now there's this button over here that's called panning. Basically, it makes the either the sound go to the left or to the right. Um, if you pull all the way to the left, you will hear, you know, it's only in the left speaker right now. It's only in the right one. We're not going to make it this extreme, of course, because that's not going to be good. But we'll be using it a little bit. Now, I know that this sound, clap number one, this sound is really, you know, in the high part. I know that clap three is also really in the high part. It's kind of have the same soft sound, like a little bit of noisy sound even. We're just going to put those, you know, onto the opposite side, like kind of 10%, a little bit. Now, I'm going to use the hi-hat as well, and I'm just going to put that a little bit to the right as well in this case because we can only go left and right. And then I'm just gonna use the clap as well, again, a little bit to the left. Now I keep my kick in the center. The reason why is that because I want this to be on every side good. I don't want to be the kick a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. I just like to keep my kick and bass in the center because I use different techniques to make them separate from the mix. Now they're basically separated. The, as I said, there's only so much space that you have in the mix and you need to use this as wisely as possible and by just panning a little bit left by using the volumes you create for every little instrument the space that it needs in the mix and the way you make it give the space is like how the mix is gonna sound in the end. Now I really like to mix as well in the mixer channel here to end up with because I can keep adjusting this really quickly the, the volume buttons and there's another place where you can use volume buttons of course in for loops if you're familiar that's over here where you basically add all your instruments and then you can, you know, use this to either make notes or you can go into the piano roll here to make notes. I use this one actually for my automations to make sure that whenever I'm using this, I can keep, uh, you know, changing my mixing and my automation will still be the same. So I use this for the automations and I use this for my mixing. And I think that this actually concludes my part 2 of my free part mixing tutorial. If you guys like this video, then please don't forget to press that like button, put a comment down below what you liked about it, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos in the future, and I will catch you guys next time.